Welcome back to another episode of Dishing on Daytime. I'm back with Chef Emily. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me. Alrighty, what are we making today? So Valentine's Day is coming up. That's right. And so we're going to make a really nice, elegant dinner that sounds fancy, but it's very, very easy. We're going to do a pan-seared chicken breast with a white wine pan sauce. That does sound fancy. It does sound fancy. I like it. This is a restaurant-quality dish, and it's a technique you can use with any ingredients you have at home. Okay. So you could mix and match any of the ingredients, and it's going to turn out perfect. Alrighty, where do we begin? So I've got a boneless but skin-on chicken breast. This is actually an airline chicken breast. This is a specific restaurant cut. You'd have to cut this off a whole chicken if you were into breaking down a chicken which might be a new sh uh, next show. Yeah. But I've just got this so we can have the wonderful crispy skin on the outside, which is my favorite part of a okay, roast chicken, okay. a pan seared chicken. So you can replicate this by taking a split chicken breast and just cutting off the ribs, and then you've got this exact piece. piece. Okay? okay. You could also do this with a boneless skinless as well. Or chicken thighs, works perfectly well. All the chickens. All right, so let's talk about pan searing. This, not a non-stick pan. This is a stick pan. This is what we use in restaurants, okay? This is made out of aluminum or stainless steel, and it doesn't have any Teflon coating on it. So you'd think that this would stick quite a bit mm -hmm. to it. But when you look at it with your naked human eyeballs, this looks pretty smooth. Mm -hmm. If you microscope down, it would look like an English muffin. A lot of little crenellations, microscopically. When this heats up, the metal expands and then it flattens out. So you're less likely to have something stick when your pan is nice and hot. Oh. Another thing. Oh, keep going. Uh, no, I just want to say I love all of your scientific explanations. Oh, thank you. You're like the Bill Nye of cooking. <laughs> so when it when it flattens out once it's warm, this way the oil also doesn't get caught in those little crenellations. So nothing can get stuck in those divots because they're gone now. Okay, so the key is to make sure you start off by making sure that pan is warm before you get anything in it. Yes. Warm, then cooking fat, then what you're searing. Okay, so we're using canola oil. Mm -hmm. This is a highly processed oil, which means it has a high smoke point, which means we can cook it at a pretty high temperature. Okay. We're not cooking this all the way through in this pan, so you don't have to worry about burning it on the outside and having it not be undone be, on yeah. the inside. This way, we're just browning the outside and we're gonna throw it in the oven. Mm -hmm. So, this has already been dried off. You wanna make sure it's nice and dry. I'm gonna take some salt, decent amount of salt, real sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> Little bit of black pepper. And I'm going to lay this skin side down, away from me, so it doesn't splash back. And you always want to do what we call presentation side first. So this is going to be the side that's going to be on top mm -hmm. on our plate. So you want to make sure that hits the heat first, OK? So you want to make sure this makes a good amount of noise. If it doesn't, you want to pull it out and try again. Make sure your pan's really nice and hot. Are we ready? Are we listening? Are we listening? That's perfect. That's Beautiful. exactly what we're looking for. So. Your smoke alarm might go off a little bit, just give it a little wave, but <laughs> this is what we're going to need to get a really nice good sear on this. I'm going to take my tongs right here and just give it a gentle press to make sure that every little bit of the skin is on directly on the pan. And flat. Yep. If this spits a little bit too much for you, you can knock the heat down a little bit if you want to. By the way, do you have the heat on medium? I had it on about medium high to okay. heat it up. If you want to speed it up, you can start it on high with nothing in it. Just make sure you're keeping an eye on it. Okay. All and right. then when you put it back in it, put it back on medium. Yep, medium, maybe even medium low if this is really spitting at you. Okay. All right? So now, to make sure that we get this nice and brown without having it stick at all, we're going to give this a shake. Ah. And if this moves, this is what restaurant chefs do all the time, yeah. the flames and stuff. If it moves, it means it's not sticking at all. So I will always want to do that before I start pulling it up with tongs or anything. All right? So let's see what this looks like. Oh, look how beautiful that Already, is. Already. So golden brown because we got a really nice hot pan going when we started. So now I'm going to take this, I'm going to move this to this pan, and this is going to go in the oven. I'm okay. Squish this in. This is going to go in the oven. In our pan right now, this brown stuff on the bottom, mm -hmm. this is called fond, F-O-N-D in French. I don't know the exact translation, but it means the delicious stuff that gets left on the bottom of your pan. That we're fond of. We're fond of it. Mm. So we're gonna add things to this to build our pan sauce in. We're gonna make our pan sauce directly in here. Okay. So we've got some chicken fat in here mm -hmm. and the canola, canola. To this, I'm gonna add some shallots. This could be onions as well at home if you don't have shallots. Just gonna squish this around just to get a little bit of color get a little aroma going mm -hmm. on this. And to this, I'm gonna add some minced rosemary. If you don't have rosemary at home, thyme is fine, oregano would be delightful. And see now, because this pan was already pretty ripping hot, these have already caramelized a little bit. We've already got all the smells coming out of the mm -hmm. rosemary. So now, we still got some fawn still left on the bottom. So what we're gonna do is deglaze. 
So you deglaze with an acidic liquid, like lemon juice, or wine, or port, or marsala. So this is when you get some nice Instagram flames going. Yes. Okay? When you're deglazing, you always want to pull it off the heat, add your acidic liquid, and then put it back on. Just to make sure nothing catches on fire. Yeah. I'm going to give this a quick stir. So what do you use? I use white wine here. Okay. So the acidity in the white wine has helped to pull up the fond mm -hmm. from the bottom. So now all that delicious flavor it is in our sauce. so good. All right. So next to this, I'm going to add some store-bought chicken stock. But to that, I've added a teaspoon and a quarter of gelatin, just regular plain gelatin. Okay. So home, homemade stock has a lot of gelatin in it because of bones and cartilage and things like that. And this, we're, we're replicating that so you get this good mouth feel with using store-bought stock. I'm going to add that in, and we're going to reduce this. So I'm going to whack this up to high, and we're going to get most of the liquid out of here. We're going to go for about a quarter inch of liquid right at the bottom. Oh. So this could be, you know, any sort of acidic liquid, any sort of broth. If you have beef broth at home, this works with steak. Chicken broth also works with steak because you get a lot of that steakiness in the fond. You were telling me about bone broth. Yes. Would Do you still need to add the gelatin if you use bone you broth? You wouldn't if you use bone broth because the bones create the gelatin that we're adding into the store broth. There you so go. If and you, the bone broth has more protein. It absolutely does. It's got gelatin and collagen. It's good for your hair and your skin and your nails. So adding the gelatin to this also replicates that. So okay. we're just doing a little bit of a quick step. So I'm just going to reduce this down. We've got this on high. Get this nice and boiling. And for a little bit of color and depth of flavor, I'm going to add about two tablespoons of soy sauce. Yum. So this is what your mother might have added a gravy master to if she was doing gravy. This replicates that same sort of unctuousness, that umami flavor. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to get this nice and swirled. So now we've got a lovely dark brown sauce. Yeah, it's a beautiful color. Mm -hmm. it's t smelling delicious. And to this, for a really nice, glossy look mm -hmm. and a nice texture, we're going to add some butter. This is called mont a beurre in French, and I do know the translation. That's called mount with butter. So what you do at the end, when you're a restaurant cook, you turn off the heat like this, and you add cold butter. It's not melted, OK? I'm just going to put it in here, and I'm just going to swirl just like this. You can use a spoon, too, if you want to. And this is just going to emulsify really nicely into the sauce to make it nice and glossy. Mm -hmm. See how that looks shinier yeah. and more like, you know, a serious sauce than some stuff we just chucked together yeah. in the pan. <laughs> we're really doing it, Chelsea. Yeah, we're really doing the thing. I mean, uh, this has been the most intimidating recipe we've done yet. But I promise you, it's not. And also, I'm doing this qu quite quickly because yeah. we're on TV and I do this for a living. You can do this at a low temperature. You can take as much time as you need. Take you certainly time. never have to do this at Chef Emily speak, okay? <laughs> All right, so now this looks glossy and gorgeous. We've got some good color. The herbs are really getting in there. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to grab our chicken. This has been in the oven for about 12 minutes mm -hmm. at 450. So now, looks so good. look how gorgeous this looks. And I'm going to take this spoon, and I'm just going to do a little bit of sauce over top. <gasps> Just like that? Just like that. Look Look how gorgeous. And if you had like rice or potatoes to soak that up. Yep. Get, get a bite in there. Oh my goodness. Try it out. Okay. Pull my Let's arm. Let's see how I cook the chicken. Let's see if it's juicy enough. What happens when you do this sort of two-stage cooking, when you sear it first and then put it in the oven, a lot of those juices stay in. They don't get wasted in the pan. Yeah, I'm getting all. So it's looking it fantastic. so good. So juicy. So juicy. So delicious. The mm. sauce is good on anything. And also, if you've got too much, save it for the next day. Toss it over some pasta. I love it. I feel like you could like make that a dressing or something. Oh, right? absolutely. Yeah. It's good for everything. So good. Chef Emily, thank you so much for coming in. You always make me so happy giving me my lunch time. And guys, if you want to try this at home, I, I tr I'll try this with you. This is our hardest recipe yet. Let's see how you do. Uh, the recipe will be on our website and show me how you do it. Send it to me on social media. Thanks for coming in, Chef Thanks Emily. Thanks for having me. Like I said, if you want to make this at home, you can find the full recipe on our website at daytimebuffalo.com.